Hello! And... This is going to be an interesting... Mini Let's Play. This game is brought to us by... The fine folks at Interplay! Forget the skippy skip. Also done by Runecraft. Uh, yes, Caesar's Palace, 2000, Millennium Gold Edition. Uh, yes, we're going back to Caesar's Palace. And... Sorry if it skips. So we're going to be playing a bit of Caesar's Palace. So I sign in, fine. I should sign in my name as... I can pull it off anyway. I shall sign my name in as Ismus. I'm the only player around here, so yeah, let's do this. So let's see, we got card games, table games, slot machines, and video games. Of course, we got the cashier machine and the stats. But the only thing I'm really good at are card games. So, without further ado, the casino kid is back and he's ready to play some Blacky Jack. <sighs> Let's go for some straight up blackjack. Thank you for serving. You know what? Let's make it, um... Put dollar down. Done. No more bets. I got a sixteen versus your ten. Players got sixteen. Would you like a hit? Yeah, Player sure. takes another card. That's nineteen. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to stand. Stand? Yes. House has 20. House wins. Oh, well. <sighs> Betting's done. Thank you. A 9 again? A 16 again. Really? At 16. Stand? I'm going to hit that. The player takes another card. Player bus. Really? It's hard to tell if I'm going to make it. Cards Something are like out. That. Ooh, queen. Blackjack! Player has blackjack. You know, 
about something. I've been watching a lot of TV lately, and one thing I've I've kind of noticed. Cards are out. So, you ever notice on Laverne and Shirley? Players got seven. This was five. Hit that. Player takes another card. Seventeen. What would you like to do? Stand. Yep. House has seven. Fourteen. Mm hmm. Twenty. Ooh. So, like I said, I've been watching a lot of TV House as of late. And the one thing I kind of noticed Betting's done. is I've been watching like Laverne and Shirley, right? So that's twenty. Splitting. That's twenty. No card. Player's got 14. Would you like to hit it? Player takes another card. Player busts. Oh well. That's one. 11. And? House has 14. Mm-hmm. House breaks. So like I said, about Laverne Shirley. Paying the table. You notice that for some reason, if you ever watch the show from start to finish, you know those 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 two characters are such bitches. I mean, I, I'm just telling you, it's, it's 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 like they are such bitches. Place your bets. And the one thing I've noticed about Laverne and Shirley is they treat almost everybody like crap on the show. It's like, especially, especially the guys they come across, you know, it's like, say for instance, they treat Lenny and Squiggy like dirt most times. And they, they always ask, well, when is my Prince Charming going to come on? Well, let's see, um, surely... You think you think you all that, but it's like, oh well, you see, I, I, I want somebody more than karma. The sad thing is, The sad thing is, you know, you can't just say, oh, I want, I'm want, i waiting for my Prince Charming to come along, and yet you already got somebody. It's like Laverne and Shirley. It's like, you got somebody. How the fuck can you? And I'm and I've always been wondering, okay, why would you Why would you, you know, for some reason just say, Well, I'm waiting for my priest to show up and like Okay, you're working at a brewery. I doubt, for some reason, when you say, oh, I'm, I'm waiting for my prince to show up, you already have somebody. Now think of this, I, I, I have somebody, right? But I wouldn't just say, oh, I'm waiting for somebody, I, I'm waiting for somebody to, you know, I'm waiting for somebody. It's like, you're stupid to say you're waiting for somebody. 
yet at the same time, it's like, well, two pairs. Still one. I mean, it's silly because. Okay, Laverne and Shirley started off the same way Mork and Mindy did. They all started on Happy Days, right? And then Happy Days some, somewhat merged into, made itself into a cartoon. You know, Fonzie and the Happy Days the gang, Fonzie and the Happy Days gang, along with um, Laverne and Shirley. And like I said, I, for some reason it's like, they treat the certain characters like crap. Like, the only two guys that ever supported them throughout the entirety of the show have always been Lenny and Squeaky. And yet, sometimes, most times, they treat them like crap. And, and it's sad because they honestly think somebody better is going to come along. And the last episode I actually did watch was something about... It was a dream sequence in which... All the characters never got married. It was in it was in, it, the the episode was called 2001: A Comedy Guys, and the characters were all seen in the 1980s, and you know where it was all where the whole the whole the whole air the whole um timeline they were it was all like during the 50s, so during the 80s they were old old people. Or seen as older people, they never got married until like <coughs> late, in, late, 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 late. Like Shirley got married to Squiggy, and Laverne got married to Lenny, or they were going to try to do so, and um, I said even, even, <laughs> even then, you know, it's like. So what, you know, you could have just, for some reason, you should have just stopped wishing. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just that simple. It's like this. It's like, for some reason, oh, well. Well, you know, I'm just waiting, like, you know, the more you wait, the more, you know, the more life is going to pass you by. And I, that that's the thing I got out of Laverne Shirley. It's kind of like, even after... The second character Shirley left and it was just Laverne only. It's like, well, it's hard to say, but I somehow just don't like that show. It's like, really, you're just going to just say, oh. Oh, this is what I'm going for. Oh. Oh, I want to... I want to do this. It's like we're going to make our dreams come true, right? Uh-huh. You're going to make your dreams come true by stepping over other people to do that. I know on our show, I never did... I, I never did understood until I kind of, like, watched it. It made no sense. Jim and the holograms.
And I mean this. <laughs> Every fiber of my being, I never did like Jim and the Holograms. Just because... Just because, what are you teaching these kids? It's like, okay, you're teaching, it's like this. Jared Abenda is trying to save her father's company from Eric Raymond. Yes, I get that. So how does she do it? She becomes a rock star. She becomes Jim, right? Okay, we understand that she becomes Jim. And we also understand and we also understand that you know she has to do what she has to do to keep the house from being taken and you know from from everything that she holds near and dear to her heart, she has to protect her with all her fiber of her being. I can understand that. But it's like this. If you're trying to become a role model, you do not go about it that way. It's kind of like this. The only person in that whole group that was basically acting more like a slut than anything else was Jim herself. You know, if you really think about it, Jim was acting like a real slut. Because for some reason she couldn't do it as Jerrica. She couldn't, she couldn't share her true feelings with Rio. I don't understand that. It's like, what is wrong with you not trying to share feelings with the one person that you truly care about, the one person that you truly love and everything else? I could say the same thing for for Kimber, but the thing about Kimber is, okay, we already know what happened with her. That's just like, okay, business transaction has been concluded, yes. Yes, she has, she has a guy who has never been seen on the show ever since. Um, as for the other girls, um, Shayna has, Shayna has a man. Um, Aja, I'm, Aja also has a man, but of course, that was Stormer's brother, in which she basically flipped her shit because she thought, oh, you're married to him. You're married to Stormer. Like, what the fuck? I would be like, woman, no. This is my sister. You didn't know that? That's my sister. No, 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 no. It's okay. No, no, seriously. It's okay. No, seriously. It's okay. You know, I've been... This is my sister. She, she's she been my sister for a long time. I knew her. Her name is Mary. So I just, I just, like, it's like, Patience. Table's closed. So one thing you could just say was, oh, hey, hey, this, this, this is my sister.
Doesn't matter. No. I mean, it's silly. It's like, okay, all, do all the women on the show have to flip their shit? I was like, oh, let's not, let's not forget about the misfits. Oh God. Red 23. Place your bets. I mean, it makes no damn sense. It's like, oh, well, you see, um... I love this person. Well, okay, if you love this person, okay, y you wouldn't flip this shit over that one person. Table's closed. It's like, I could never understand, I could never understand the, the girl groups of that show. It's like, okay, we understand. You don't like Jim. Pizzazz on the show. It's like, I don't like Jim. Why? No reason. Just like 10. There's no reason why you don't like um, Pizzazz. I mean, um, there's no reason why you like Jim other than she could be just as nasty as you. Placements. She could be just as nasty as you, but she chooses not to be nasty. It doesn't make sense, but the thing about it, it, it doesn't make sense. Because in the case of this, it's like, there's rivalry, and then there's just straight out hatred. Oh, it's a good thing I've I've actually looked at how to play roulette by watching um Corn Shack do um Casino Kid 2. I've learned how to play roulette <laughs> roulette like okay this is how I play roulette just do this so whatever whatever it lands on you will win Tables closed. And I could never understand why I just didn't like certain shows on TV. It's like I watched them when I was a kid. But now, as I'm grown up, it's like I suddenly start to think, what the fuck was with me when I was watching this shit? Red 34. Bits. I mean, it makes no sense. Cause I look at, I look at cartoons now, and certain cartoons, I don't care much for. It's like, especially the new ones. Like I know they're for a new generation on them, but I don't really care for it because, like, okay, it's hard to tell if you're making this new generation stupid, or you're just trying to be funny. Cause you know you can be you can be funny and not try to make yourself look stupid. You know. I mean, all all, all my videos, what I do most times are just not trying to make myself look stupid. You know, I can tell a, a terrible joke now and then. You know, crack a few lines and everything. Oh, and for anybody who actually likes Laverne and Shirley, my, you know, it's not a bad show. It's just. When age catches up to you, you start to think. Exactly. Why the fuck did I like this show to begin with? Have you ever thought about that? You know, sometimes. 
I mean, sometimes, have you ever really thought about that, like... No more bets. Why the fuck did I watch this show to begin with? Then you start to think, oh... So there's my reason why. The fuck was wrong with me? Red 16. Set your bets. I mean, it makes no sense. But it's like, a long time ago when I was a kid, I used to watch a lot of TV. Like, namely, game shows. I watched a lot of game shows back in the day. Now, I don't really watch any game shows. Why? Because for some reason, it's like the new game shows don't appeal to me like the old ones. I'm serious. I've never did, you know, I've watched a lot of game shows like Super Password, um, Family Get Feud, down on the table. Family Feud with, um, through, um, Richard Dawson to, uh, John O'Hurley. I mean, Steve Harvey's alright as a host. You know, I, I'm not gonna lie, Steve Harvey is fine as a host, but, you know, no more bets, please, but, you know, sit your hands, Circle. Like I said, I, I, I usually watch a lot of old game shows, Family Feud being one of them. And like I said, the new host, Steve Harvey, he's 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 an okay he's an okay host. He's funny to a point, but you know the jokes, I don't know, they kinda wear wear themselves then. I mean that's why that's why I think. Don't ask why I'm doing this. Get your bets down on the table. Get your down on the table. I'm usually not into, not into games like this, but I'm trying something, you know. Place 
your bets? No more bets, please. Front and back, front and back. Set those hands. I think the only the only game show I do remember that was I don't know, it for what it was worth. I'm sorry if I'm kind of like in and out, in and out, but Password is the only one that kind of like died out too fast. Anybody who knows what I'm talking about. Knows. House wins. You're getting a circle. I think I'm playing enough of that. <sighs> Password is the only game show that basically just died out. There, play, there have been plenty of game shows that died out, but I think Password was the last of the great game shows. The last of the great word association game shows that actually died out. And strangely, Chain Reaction recently had a, a revival. With a better host this time. I mean, I've seen a new chain reaction, and, and I'd say the, the new guy on there, he know, he's just, he just sends players energy. It's like, you know, there's some, there's some game show that make you feel like, okay, this is worth coming on to, because the people. It's like. Like the last guy who did Chain Reaction, he was, he was talk, but it was like, blah 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 blah. Okay, fuck you. Let's get back. Let's get back to the game. But usually it's like, eh. to me it's like, well. You know, where's the fun at? You know, the, the host has to be, you know, very lively. And unselected. like a good game show every now and then when I when I feel I when I feel the mood to do that hand selected hand one selected hand three selected And 
Challenge one selected. Hand three selected. Hand one selected. And usually, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm far too much involved in, in this game. You can tell. <laughs> Sometimes I miss watching a good old-fashioned TV show, you know? Like, I miss watching Double Dare. I didn't care much for Double Dare 2000, but I, I did love old-school Double Dare, super sloppy. Family was kind of so-so, but... I really did like the first two seasons. I also had the um, the old NES game in which you had to basically go dare, double dare, physical challenge, and if you and if you were actually good, you can actually get to the freaking obstacle course. Of course, the only highest I ever got to on the obstacle course was probably about six, six, no higher than seven. Selected and selected. Uh, usually, like I said, I miss certain shows that were on TV. And three selected and selected. To this very day, I think I'm one of the last few people, very few people out there who actually miss the old time game shows like Double Dare, Finders Keepers. I think when Wesley Yor was on Finders Keepers, when he was the host of Finders Keepers, good lord. He basically said, look, you have to basically make a mess. It's like, yeah, you're on a show in which you get rewarded for making messes. How could you not like... Uh, I said, think about it. You're getting rewarded for making a mess of your room. I said, consider this. Like, sometimes, I know my room's a mess. But when I'm looking for something, I would sometimes look. Sometimes I would dig all over the place just to find one little item. And it's just funny. Because I'm just like, Oh, guess what? I know what I'm doing. I know where it is, but I don't. But I don't want to mess up my room at the same time. So I kind of like, okay, where is it that I'm looking for? Usually, that's the case with most things that I that I find interesting. And usually when I find stuff in my room, I'm like, oh, I haven't seen this in a while. Mm -hmm. Like, I find old movies and whatnot that I thought I lost but never lost it. They were just put somewhere else by me. Usually that's the case. So I'm like, uh, well, see. But yeah, what do I have to say about this game? Well, Caesar's Palace 2000 for the PlayStation 1. It's so much better than Caesar's Palace on Super Nintendo because, well, it has some kind of story to it. Uh, it has some kind of weak-ass story. But I still say my all-time casino game is either a toss-up between Casino Kid or Vegas Dream. That's just me, though. But, you saw how well I was doing, you know. You win a few, you win a few, you lose a few, but you have to know when to stop. And I was talking about a whole bunch of, whole bunch of shit that, you know, normally I wouldn't talk about. But like I said, if it didn't make sense, don't worry about it. 
What I'm playing isn't making any sense, so don't worry about it. And if it, and like I said, if anybody's defending Laverne and Shirley, don't take it seriously. I said, I know, they're working women, okay? I, I understand that. But you don't treat people like shit. You know, cherish the people you got, you know? Even if they might not be much, or might not do much for your life, they're worth living in your life. That's the point I'm trying to I'm trying to put across. It's the same thing with Jim and the Holograms. It's like they never did like the show. I don't know why I'm watching it now. But I start I start to think about certain things while I'm watching the show. Cause I never did watch you know, when I was a kid, you just watched it because it was a cartoon. But when you're an adult, you start to think totally different. So you know, that sort of thing. You start to appreciate certain things that that was in the past that you wish existed now. But, you know. It's like you look you look at back then, you kinda wonder the fuck was I on when I was watching this? And then you look back at it now, it's like Oh, I see now. If it was like a, it was like a rant of certain things. Like I said, this is all right. Th this this game is all right, and I just showed off pretty much just about everything you can expect out of out of um casino uh, out, of, out of a casino. I think if I haven't shown off anything yet, let me show off another game. I haven't shown off craps. I don't think I ever played Crash before. Like I said, certain games, I'm just like, I'm not even thinking. Get it while the dice are hot. Like I said, I, I don't even know what I'm doing here. But I'm just showing it off. It's not like, you know, this is real money, this is virtual money, so... Spend it however you want. Da, da, da. I don't care. I'm only just playing the damn game. Issue are coming out. Craps 11 any 7. Hey, mark the point. I lost $3. $2. $1. Three, two, one, two, one. Get your hats in while the dice are in the middle. Like I said, I'm not really good at craps. Yes, yeah, just whatever. I don't really care much for crap. It's like other, any other game. Like, oh, I know how to play this one. Uh, but sometimes I'm just trying it out. Anyway. <laughs> like I said, there are certain things I tend to like. And like I said, there, this is one of those games that I decided, you know, okay, even though it's a request, this is something I can just basically shoot the shit on, you know? Because these are the games that I can basically shoot the shit, fire out anything that, that just comes to my mind, and just relax with it. But yeah, this was Caesar's Palace 
2000 Millennium Gold Edition for the Sony PlayStation 1. I hope you have enjoyed this video in regards to me sharing my thoughts about certain shows, what I thought about then and what I'm thinking about now. But you know, the feelings are real though. The feelings are very real. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to like, share, subscribe, leave a comment or two. Just don't insult. You know, be nice. Don't hate, appreciate. It. All that good stuff. So I've been the Tenkaichi of gaming. Mr. Pookie is he seven? And this game? I see as done. So until next time, I'll see you with more videos.